So the goal was for, for Gulliver and myself to row to Canada, about four and a half thousand miles, a journey which we imagined would take about five or six months. You just never can tell with oceans. I wouldn't have a support boat, I wouldn't resupply anywhere because there's not really anywhere. And so I had to take everything that I needed or thought I might need out to the ocean with me. So food, a water maker to desalinate uh, ocean water, that sort of thing. So setting out to sea, as you can imagine, is quite the transition. You go from uh, being on land with lots of people and suddenly you're in this world where you're doing everything by yourself, essentially. You can walk this far and that's it. So I like to give myself about a month to settle in. But on the Pacific, it didn't quite happen like that because I had a note from my weather forecaster three weeks in saying, I don't want to spoil the party, Sarah, but this is coming. <coughs> And it's a tropical storm, although at this stage it was hurricane, uh, due to head north and recurve out to sea, straight over my sea area. And so my weather forecaster, Lee, said, well, by the time it reaches you in a week's time, it's going to be a tropical storm, so that's good, but it's still not good. So there's sort of two options, really. One is batten down the hatches, stay where you are, and the other is get a preemptive evacuation. So quite a big decision. And I spent a couple of days just trying to decide what to do. Probably my 32-year-old self would have chosen differently. But my 26-year-old self decided to stay. So I battened down the hatches. Food and, and, and drink um, accessible in the cabin because really the idea was that I would just have to lie strapped to my bunk for three days whilst the storm did its thing. And then I thought, okay, mentally, that's going to be the biggest trick to getting through this, probably. I think something between Winnie the Pooh, you know, just a bit zoned out, uh, but equally present enough to be aware of what's happening. So I wrote on my hand, smile and breathe, thinking those two things will hopefully help me. And I'm happy to say they, they roughly helped in that I survived it, but I did find it's impossible to smile when you're terrified and quite often difficult to breathe as well. They were three of the scariest days of my life. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. And I visibly saw the barometer hands do this as the storm approached. And with that came the sort of ramping up of the wind and the waves and therefore the noise. The, um, the thickness of my boat walls are probably like a finger thick. So you hear everything. You think you've got thousands of tons of water crashing about. And you know that thing you do to little kids, you swing them around by their arms and they whoop because they love it, because it feels fun and you can feel the G-force pushing you back. It sort of felt like someone was doing that with my boat. Although rather than sort of, woo do you want to stop now? It was more like, boom, bash, pow, capsize, underneath the water, which way up am I? It was horrible. And Gulliver got really quite badly damaged within that context. And so halfway through the storm, at the height of it, when the winds are gusting uh, sort of 70, 80, 90 miles an hour and the waves are sort of 15 metres, I clocked that there'd been so much damage to Gulliver that I wouldn't be able to repair him and carry on safely. And so I sent a message to my team at home saying, once this has died down, I'm going to need to get out of here. And hooray for the Japan Coast Guard. They arrived 36 hours later one hour earlier than they said they were going to be. You know, without wishing to stereotype a nation, I love that the Japanese are always early. I was picked up off Gulliver and grateful to be alive, but really sad to be leaving my little blue boat behind because he'd kept me safe and alive and it felt like abandoning a friend. And as he drifted away onto the horizon, I thought, it's okay. I'm going to come back and get you because I've left the little tracking beacon on the boat. And so my heart sank about 20 minutes after this picture was taken when somebody walked in with some things they'd taken from my boat. Things I might like to keep. Like the tracker. <sighs> uh, the lovely man thought it might be a mobile phone that I wanted to keep. So um, up until October just gone, I hadn't heard about Gulliver. I hadn't heard anything about Gulliver for four years. And then I had a note in the autumn just gone saying that he'd been spotted a few hundred miles north of Hawaii. Fancied little summer break. <laughs> so who knows where he is right now? Keep a lookout because there's quite a lot of chocolate on board. <laughs> I would like to see him again.